Hey, what's going on, beautiful jellyfish? It's Tracy. Thank you so much for taking a little bit of time today to hang out with me. I really appreciate it. Um, in today's video, I'm going to be doing my updated ranking, ranking of my updated EDH roster. That's what it is, but it's kind of sort of a ranking in this video because basically I'm going to be going from um, my lowest power level to all the way to my highest. And um, I, it's kind of a little hard because I feel like I did this like myself, which is always really challenging. Um, and I feel like it's a lot easier. Like I'm, it's so much easier when Paul's like, yeah, that deck of yours is so much more powerful than you think, which we had that conversation the other day with my Merfolk deck. And I was like, you are, you're right. Um, but anyways, so I'm going to be doing that from least to most. I'm not going to be assigning numbers per se. I might say, I feel like this deck is around this, but I don't, I'm not like a hard set on that because the reality is, is my five might look a little bit different than your five. Um, I think it's really hard and I have thought about doing a video on like my own interpretation of the power scale. I'm hesitant to film that though because I don't want it to be like, this is how I feel when I feel like my opinions could really easily change. And I don't necessarily know if it's something that I have very strong concrete feelings on because again, I feel like you could sit down and it could just look a little bit on the different side. And I don't want to be like, this is what the EDH power scale looks like because I don't necessarily know if I have a very strong opinion on that and I don't necessarily know I don't really want to be spreading like that this is what I feel but the cats are in here who knows what that's gonna look like who bloody knows um I do have deck techs on I believe every single deck with the exclusion of one which is my Tamishi deck it's very new um but I will be talking a little bit more in depth in this video um so let's just jump in one two We've got 12 commander decks. Also, did you guys like the thumbnail? I tried. I didn't really try that hard, though. I don't know why I'm giving myself credit. I didn't. I just threw decks together. Like, let's be very honest with you here. Okay. All right. We're starting with the first one. Also, I'm going to be showing you guys my deck boxes. It's so colorful and pretty. I'm missing orange, though. My next one will be orange for sure because I don't have orange. Not that orange is like my favorite color or anything, but, you know, it's missing. It's not It's not here. Okay, first off, we have Moogus. My lowest power level deck is Moogus. Also, too, I just want to say when I say lowest power level, and I'll talk about them in individually, but I'm I, I'm fine where they're at. You know what I mean? Like, it's, it's okay. I, I like to have a range. Okay, this deck is super silly. Basically, the whole point and the premise of the deck is it's evolved around sacrifice. So it's around sacrificing not only my creatures, but my opponent's creatures. I don't necessarily think I have as much, like, I haven't played this deck in a really long time, but it's 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 not a 1v1 game. It's, it's a multiplayer game, you know what I mean? And the only person I'm playing with is Paul. So basically it is revolved around sacrifice so it's sacrificing my creatures which in turn makes my opponent sacrifice stuff so it has a lot of like when this dies there's a little bit of token gen in here so i can use that as kind of like fodder but it's a very silly deck it is not taking itself seriously guys it's literally it's just not it is straight up just going to um make people sacrifice things it's very silly um i like the black red color combination a lot though i do find myself leaning more in the black than the red if you know me i'm not a red mage i've never claimed to be a red mage in my life the fact that i own a red deck box truly is revolutionary so we should all just you know applause now um so yeah Anyways, I like the deck. I like where it sits. I like where it's at. And yeah, that's Mucus. Next deck on my EDH ranking power scale. I'm actually going to change the order in which these are in. Whoa. Okay. And this is very hard for me to rank because I just built this deck, but I'm going to put next to me. She also like, guys, look at this beautiful color. This is actually, it's showing up a lot later on camera, but it's actually like a really dark, like it's a really nice turquoise color. Love these. All of my decks are, um, with the exception of two are either um, Ultra Pro or Ultimate Guard. These are literally like the same exact things. And all the sleeves are Dragon Shield mats with the exception of one, which I will talk about. I don't know what that finger wave was. I do not know what was going on there. But to me, she is very hard for me to rank because basically the whole thing of the deck is about bouncing people's stuff and the only person I played against is Paul but it works better with other um with other like people because your whole point is you want to draw and maximize cards it does not have a win condition currently to be fair Moogus's win condition is also extremely slow um it, it kind of revolves around other people doing things and then you're kind of just like I'm gonna finish you off I'm gonna like I'm gonna get the final like 
blow, but like other people have done so much damage. That's kind of like the whole point of this deck. It's very hard for me to rank this currently because it doesn't have a win condition really at all. And um, it's not very competitive, if anything at all, but it's going to get there and I'm excited for it. We're going to have some, some, some major win cons, like some ultimate, co some combos and stuff like that. So that is that. I'm putting them on the floor because like this side where you guys are positioned on my desk, there's like not enough room to put commander decks there. So here we are. Okay. The next thing is Tesa. And it was so funny because I'm just in a conversation with my friend Trevor about this deck and he's like, Tracy, that deck really isn't that competitive. And I was like, I know it's not trying to be. I was like, I run cards like Doom Traveler. And Doom Traveler is not an extremely powerful card on face value. With Tisa, you get two. It's not trying to be very competitive, though. And I will film a deck tech for you guys um, that should be within the next couple months to show you guys the changes. But I'm actually going to hold off. I was actually going to think about filming it um, recently, but I'm actually holding off because I want to get a couple more cards, not necessarily to make it super powerful or anything. I still want to keep it on the low side, but um, I feel like the deck is just, just around token gen. It's about maximizing Tesla's value. There's a couple like when it dies, it does this. And then with Tesla, it triggers twice, which is super cool. So there's a couple of those things and it is revolved around um, those sort of like token gen things. So it's cute. I like it. It just, it's got some work. I would say all three of these decks need a little bit of work. Not a ton of work. To me, she needs a ton of work, but everything else just needs a little bit of work to make them a little bit on the better side. So, okay. Next up, we have the one, the only Riku of two reflections. Riku is so fun. It's so silly. It is clone fest. We are cloning all the things. I want to say there's like Zelda, what are you doing? She's like sniffing my light. She's like, I've never sniffed this before, mom. I need to get my scent on it. Don't you know? Don't you read Cat Magazine? Sorry, Zelda. Riku. Okay. I got about maybe eight or so clones in here, which when you think about it, that's really not a lot. It's really not a lot, but I am cloning my things. I'm cloning other people's things. There's a couple steel. There's like a little like mass manipulation in there, which is so funny. I really, really want to get a chance to play with this. So like, could you stop rubbing your face on my camera? It's very expensive. This cat. Yeah, why? Very expensive. It's expensive. Let me not like, I don't know why I just hyperbolated that. Also hyperbolate. It's a verb apparently. Anyways, so it's not trying to take yourself too seriously. It also literally runs like Comet Storm. Hear me out. That card's actually really good in Commander. Okay, I know like might get a little bit of flack for that card, but it has a couple of those type of effects where it deals X damage. It also has a Splinter Twin combo, so it's got actual legitimate win conditions. It also runs Biovisionary. So like those are my couple of win conditions. I don't really have a lot of like, or I could just make a copy of one of my opponent's creatures that is super big and threatening and swing that way. There's a couple of win conditions. It's got about like four or five win conditions, which is you know, more than Tamishi, which is zero. So really, I feel like I should have ranked Tamishi a little bit lower at this point. I probably should have swapped the two of them, but it's hard for me to rank Tamishi because it's, it's so new and I haven't tweaked it. You know what I mean? But it'll get there. Anyways, Riku, it's silly. I like it. Okay. So I mentioned that there were two decks that have different deck boxes. This is one of them. This is by the brand um, Dex Protection, which I have a really funny story about this that I will literally never forget is I, it was either this or my binder because they're by the same brand. And I literally was like, guys, I have no idea what the brand. And one of you was like, Tracy, it's literally right there in the word. And I was like, I'm sorry, but this like doesn't really look like a word to me and, until someone pointed it out. And I feel really dumb about it, but it's fine. Okay. Okay, now I feel like those are on the um, sillier whatever. And now we get like kind of serious. Okay, I have my ladies tribal deck, which like this deck is so fun. Like it is just at the end of the day, like point value, wherever this deck lands, it is just a bunch of ladies. It's cool. It's fun. I haven't seen a lot of other people do it before. No one that I know in my area has done something like this before. It's just, it's just cool. It's like not something you see every day and I like it. It's, um, it has like all sort of lady tribal cards and it is also, um, what was I going to say? Um, it also can be like sliver 
sliver queen tokens so like i that is definitely like another win condition the deck is also titled notions of a teenage drama queen courtesy of paul i mean if that's not the best commander deck title I've, you've ever heard in your life i don't know what it is okay really this is where you're choosing to be do i love you yes I understand that you want to be like mom, but now is not the time. Pets is what you want. You're so cute. Okay, you need to leave. Right there. Okay, you might see her little tiny head in the room. Don't mess it up. This is your one chance. We all know it's probably going to be more than one chance because I'm a, I'm a pushover. Okay, so... <laughs> I'm such a push over when it comes to the cats. I go from like zero to hundred really quickly. If they do something bad, I'm like, absolutely not. Like, absolutely not. Like her being in frame is like minor things, you know? But anyways, it's super silly. It's not trying to take stuff too seriously, but it does have competitive things. Like there are competitive cards in this deck. Um, and I've, fun fact about this, this is like my third rebuild of this deck. I've taken it apart and rebuilt it three times. And also another fun fact, I almost, I traded for Silver Queen when it was approximately $30. And now it's like... It's like 200 or something last I checked, which is absolutely ridiculous. I wish they would remove Silver Queen off the reserve list. I want to foil. Anyone else? Okay. Okay. So that is that. Okay. Um, gosh, I don't know where to rank. I think I'm going to go. I'm, I'm confident in this one. Okay. The next up we have is Merfolk. Now, there are a lot of different commanders that you can run. Um, I'm choosing to run Zagana. Um, this Zagano, there will be a picture of her. And the reality is I probably could do so many different commanders with this and it would totally work. Um, I have always really enjoyed Merfolk. Um, it was one of the tribes that I had, like, when I had originally, like, first started getting into magic, I wanted to build, like, a 60 card, like, you know, casual, like, deck. That was, like, what I wanted to do. It was, like, Merfolk are cool. Like, I want to do that. Um, and I really like Sagana because when, basically, when she enters the battlefield, if you have another thing with Puzzle Scanner, which you do, she has, um, you get to draw a card, which I really like. So it's, like, if it dies, you can recast and you get to draw another card. I don't know. I just really like that ability. And she has Adapt 4 for 6 mana, which is a lot. And each creature with a Puzzle Scanner has Trample. I feel like she does a lot of different things, and I really like that. You can smack people with Sagana and you know, you can make her really big or you can just everything else gets trampled and it's just super hard to kill your stuff. Um, or it's super hard for them to like block your stuff is what I should say. And overall, I really like this deck. I think that it, it does have a little bit of that blue like counter magic as well. Not a ton, but it does have some. And, um, the removal in there, I like, like, I like a lot of the spot removal cards that, um, that it has. And it just is like building up your merfolk. It doesn't, it, it definitely, I would say, goes um, a couple of creatures that are, like, like it, it'll have, like, a merfolk that base power and toughness starts out as a 2-2. Two -two. But then I have multiple things that gives plus one, plus one. Like, I think in this deck I have, like, just creatures alone. Like, maybe, like, seven cards that that are merfolk that are like other merfolk you can trigger plus one or something like that and then i have all these other cards that put plus muscle counters on it it's super cool i really like it i have a doubling season in here do i i'm pretty sure i have a doubling season in here yeah i feel like it's been a very long time since i've done a deck tech on this maybe i should get on that maybe i'll put that on my little list but anyways it's a cool deck also this beautiful purple color this is like the one deck all my like sleeves and stuff match but for some reason like these are like different i feel like i need to find like a light purple deck box and then i'll get like dark purple sleeves for this Ooh, got two more colors i'm running out of colors guys okay Next up, we have zombies. Merfolk and zombies are very comparable in power level. Um, I ranked, um, it's funny, I rank zombies a little bit higher. I think that if Paul was making this, he would definitely flip flop these two. I feel like zombies has a lot more win conditions in the sense that it can be like, I'm going to kill people with Micaeus because you can very easily kill people with your commander. A couple smacks. And I also have a lot of those, like when another zombie gets plus or something, I have a lot of those. Um, and then what I really like about zombies is the resilience in this deck so it's like oh you've killed my stuff I can just bring it back or I don't really care um that you've killed my thing or whatever it doesn't really bother me those are like my favorite things when like when someone kills my stuff and I'm like I literally do not care why is she crying sorry that's Leia being hysterical it's definitely like nap time for the cats they need to they need to get on that 
but anyways um and then also too i can go very wide i have a lot of things that will make like tokens um i have, I have a couple things that make tokens that are like tutus and again they get buffed so i can have like 10 tutus or something like that that get buffed that are now three threes now i have 10 three threes that's 30 damage on board so it's like you know and then they're hard to kill with micaeus out the curve is low which i really love um and it's just and, and it's like it's cool like it's the the curve is low and then the cards that are like high cmc are like those when you know make x like zombies i have a couple of those and i have like two 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 of those and um it just it's cool i like it it's 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 a cool deck and i feel like it's just decks that are like hard to kill are really good in my opinion so okay okay we're getting to the top five top five power level stuff okay now we have rain and i'm actually shocked to find this deck super high up here but i just really love this deck and i feel like it deserves its spot up up here so high because it's i love decks that have a lot of resilience like i said with zombies and i feel like reen has that it's hard to kill your stuff with reen um she's got flying so you can kill people with commander damage which is awesome and i also feel like your stuff gets plus one plus oh and that little push that little bit of of oomph can like really just hurt your opponents because all of a sudden your three four is now a four four and that might not seem huge but it adds up this card i just did a deck tech on this so if you're interested i think i mentioned all the deck techs will be listed in the genre below that i have and the deck like lists but it's 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 good like it's it does a lot of different things the enchantment and artifact removal is insane i think i have too much and I, I'm not usually someone who says that. Like, I think I have too much. It's just so incredibly cool. Um, I'm very happy with the, day, the way that the deck performs. There are a couple of cards that are like a couple of flex slots that I know that are going to come out, including, again, a couple of those artifact enchantment hates because I literally have too much that I have to take them out. But that is that. Okay. Alila. Coming in at, at in the top four. Um this deck is so cool. The removal suite in here is like a dream. Like I think wholeheartedly, like I, I feel so conflicted to say like I am an Esper player because I love these colors, but I also just love green. So I feel really conflicted. But like, I think in my true heart of hearts, I run like all my favorite cards in this deck. You know what I mean? Like I run the board wipes in this deck, the removal, the counter spells, the spot removal, the board wipes, like I, I get it all. I get it all in this deck. This deck is so cool. I just, I feel like every time I play this deck, I'm like, this is so fun. You know what I mean? It also has like a ton of artifact and enchantments because whenever you cast them, you get the one one, but with Alila, they get a little bit bigger. I forgot, is Alila just the plus one plus? Yeah, it's plus one plus oh. You can kill people with Alila. A little bit on the harder side because she's a little like smaller. Her base power type is compared to like green. Green's a five four, but um, you can definitely do that. Alila's a little bit hard to hit as well because she's got flying and death touch and lifelink which is super cool she kind of does all the little things i really like it and um it's just a super fun deck super fun i really like it so okay guys now we get into like the top three like the top three power levels and if i'm going to be very honest with you guys i actually find it really challenging to rank these but i think i'm gonna do like this uh, i don't know okay angels this is um monocolored angel tribal and also as i like to call it board wipe tribal it was so funny i'm talking to Trav about this stuff because he is avison and he one of the nicest compliments he said he's like i kind of modeled my avison deck around yours I, I don't even think and like i i it's so funny too to like i i was talking to one of my friends koji hello i know you're watching and he was like I, I recommended someone watch one of your videos and they are now running this card because of you. And like, I don't know if like you guys understand that, but like those are like the coolest comments to me. When someone's like, yeah, like I'm running this card because of you or like you inspired me to run this card. Like 
coolest thing in the entire world. Like, I'm never going to get over that. That is so sweet to me. But anyways, he was like, how many board wipes are you running? And I was like, gosh, I think I knocked it down from like 10 to maybe nine or eight or something like that because I had too many. And he's like, I was running 16. And I was like, Trev, you were literally not. I was like, I cannot. He's like, yeah, I had to cut it down. I was like, that's too many, dude. That's too many. Like, if I'm saying that, like, as someone who's queen of the board wipes, like, you know, it's too much because that's too many. I'm like, dude, you don't need that many. But it's, it's good. It, the deck has, it's just gotten better, like, over time, too. And, like, that's what I think is so cool. Like, these, these three decks I've had for like the longest as well, which I think is partially why, like when the longer you have a deck, like the more you just get to see it grow and you get to see it become better. And I just feel like this deck is just, it's so consistent. It is when it gets going, it is so hard to stop because it's your entire board is just indestructible. I can get Avicen out on turn four is the earliest. I do not think that I can get Avicen out on turn three, which getting it out on turn four is like pretty ridiculous. I also too, I don't want to say the word consistently because I think that's just really hard to say in a commander deck. I don't know how you guys feel, but I feel like it's it's hard for me to say things like that because it's like you have to have kind of like the perfect hand and like, yeah, there's like cards that could be interchanged with, but I just, I feel like it's hard to do. You know what I mean? But anyways, the deck is cool. It's just, it, it, it's so hard to kill your things because they're all indestructible with Avacyn. If they kill her, it's a little bit annoying because then you got to pay 10 for her, but it is what it is. Um, you know, there are times where I literally just like hard cast Avacyn. What I mean by that is like just eight lands, but it, I have a lot of mana acceleration in the deck and then it just angel tribal and you're running all these awesome angels and it's just so incredibly cool. I love it. Okay. Okay. Yeah, it's Tassiger. Okay. This is the other deck that is a little bit different. This is Ultra Pro. This is like the one of these super, super smooth ones. If you're looking at decks, though, I would recommend going with the Ultimate Guard or these Ultra Pros. They're, again, literally the same thing. They're like four bucks. These are a little more expensive. I think they're around 12 and some of you might be shocked to see Tassiger at the number two slot and not the number one slot because, like, it's my baby and I adore this deck. Um, but maybe you'll see why when I talk about it. So Tassiger is... Um, I think a good word for this deck is like understated if you don't pay attention. Um, so I think the difference between Paul and I, and it's so funny because someone had commented on this in um, a video when I filmed with Paul, my husband, and we were talking about our decks and um, someone was like, oh, who's the better commander player? And I think the, <laughs> I love Paul, but what Paul will do is draw so much aggro to himself really early in the game. And, um, it's so funny because we play like this game Paladins and I feel like he does the same thing. He's like, I feel like you're like really reserved when you play. Like, so for example, if I'm playing like a healer, I will like stay push further back and I might not have as much damage output, but I have a lot more healing and I'm staying alive, which is in turn helping the team. And I'm able to like push back and, you know, help my team, whatever, whatever. And, um, he is a lot more aggressive when he plays. And this is the same exact thing when we play commander is Paul will just go, guns blazing, so aggressive, whatever, whatever, and just like gets killed off. And I am a lot more understated with the deck where I will kind of just be like, I'm taking my time. I'm growing my board. I'm getting my mana acceleration. I'm going to play my tutor. No one really knows what's going on, whatever, whatever. And then it's just, I, I can win in a couple of different ways. You know, I can kill people with just a couple of my creatures Kesse Cage Breakers is a main win condition, which I love this card. That was the card. It was Kesse Cage Breakers that this person that I introduced them to Kesse Cage Breakers. It's a brilliant card. I absolutely adore this card. And um, it's just, it's cool. I have like one of the um, take an extra turn cards. I kind of think I should get another one too, but you honestly, you tutor for really whatever you need. There's so many tutors in this deck. And um, I think you can just really get whatever it is that you need in any situation. And it's kind of one of those where you kind of just have like one or two of everything and then you could just get it back. The recursion in this deck is absolutely wild and ridiculous. Hold on, Zelda is playing with a pen. That's just a stationary based cat, guys. Like she really is. She just loves stationary. Okay, so yeah, it's, it's, it's awesome. I love this deck. It's my baby. It's all foil. It's all beautiful. Look forward to a deck tech coming soon. That's all I'm going to say. Okay. 
number one deck, the most powerful in my opinion, and again, I feel like these three, they're very close, is Omnoth. And Omnoth is pretty much exactly like you read the text and you get a picture of what the deck looks like. It's all about mana acceleration. Um, it's all about getting as many lands as possible and making those five fives. That's the name of the game. Um, it's, it's just a good, good deck. It's powerful. It does exactly what you need it to. It plays the same way every time for the most part, which is not for everyone. And I don't play Omnoth all the time. I can play Angels and Tassiger more than I can play Omnoth because Omnoth, when I, when I play it in one night, I want to let that deck sit. I don't want to play it again. I don't have an urge to grab it again because it can stomp very easily. I can get Omnoth out extremely early. And I have a really funny story to tell you guys about Omnoth actually is, um, I, I don't even remember what game store I was playing at, but someone thought that I was playing my deck incorrectly. And they were like, I don't understand why you're mana accelerating. You don't even have Omnoth out. And I was like, okay, first off, don't tell me how to play my deck ever. Um, don't do that. <laughs> Second off, the reason I'm accelerating is because I can get Omnoth out and then I'm going to continue to mana accelerate. But I'm still going to go back to the first point. Don't tell me how to play my deck. I built it. I know how it plays. Thanks for nothing. You know, don't do that. Don't ever do that. So um, anyways, um, it's 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 just consistent because it, it does one job and it does it really well. It's kind of like What's like a good example of this? It's like a Levi store. This is the second gene analogy I have made within these last couple videos. It's like Levi's. They make jeans and they do it well. Omnoth. It makes tokens and it pumps out lands and it does it well. It's not like going to stray and try to make something else because it just, it's going to keep going with the one product that it knows and it does a very good job of it. I really, really, really like this deck. I mean, I really like everything. I mean, I think I'm not someone who keeps things around if I don't like it. You know what I mean? So guys, that is everything for my commander decks. Everything will be listed in the down bar below. If they're not updated, I'm sorry. I think there's a couple of things that aren't updated in here. Just a little bit of a bummer, but anyways, I really hope that you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know what deck tech you're excited to see upcoming. Um, if it's something a little bit outdated, I try to do deck tech every two years. Um, so Tassiger is due. So that is on the list. Um, but that is it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you enjoyed it, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Let me know what deck of these is your favorite in the comment below because I'd love to know. Subscribe to our channel if you're not already and I'll catch you in my next one.